Yep, very good. Very good. Next up, we have our six-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion, our defending series champion, and uh, a guy who uh, has had a lot of success out here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Jimmy Johnson's won four times here uh, at, uh, at Las Vegas, and uh, he's got a best driver rating of a 112.3 here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, which is very, very good. Anytime you're over 100, it's very good. But, Jimmy, just talk about coming here, seeking your first victory of the season at a place that um, is, uh, has been good to you. Yeah, I love coming back here. I spent so much time here in my younger years racing from uh, racing dirt bikes in the Henderson area. Um, a lot of years, the mini nationals were, were placed over there for the amateur dirt bike racers. Uh, literally across the street is where the uh, the start finish in the main pit area for the Mint 400 was, which I uh, changed a lot of tires and, and worked in a pit for many years, and then also competed in a few of the, the Mint 400s myself. So Vegas has been great to me in, in racing and really kind of growing up on the West Coast, a, a racing hub. So when, when this track was built here, uh, hoped to race on it, then it certainly had my success on this track and, and enjoy it out here. It's always a uh, an interesting race because it's so early in the season and usually one of our first big tracks that we compete on and you find out how you stack up and where you're at and uh, you know Phoenix went went well for us we, we would like to have been a, a bit better but had a very good week and progressed uh, through the practice sessions in the race learned about the qualifying format and, and kind of what we want to do uh, this weekend and then yesterday's test session was nice there were points where uh, we were real fast and happy and then with the rules like they are now, it is very easy to uh, make an adjustment on your car that affects four or five other areas and takes the car right out of the racetrack and slows you down. So, uh, you know, we're, we're learning, we're enjoying the process. There's a, a bunch of new challenges right now with the new car, but uh, I love this track. I love the area. Uh, one, one other thing to add to this racetrack and how you drive it, uh, for whatever reason, it's been a, a very... Um, intense track, a track that bravery usually pays off, and uh, I think that fits my driving style and, and works good for me here. Very good. We'll take questions for Jimmy. If you have one, we'll start here with Mark, and then we'll go to Alan and then Marty. Mark, Alan, Marty, and then Reed. Uh, Mark Anderson, Las Vegas View Journal. You mentioned about uh, having spent a lot of time here. Do you, do you have a lot of friends here? And I mean, do you, is this a place you come to in your, in your own time a lot? No. I, I did a lot growing up just from a racing perspective, and then you know, night or two out here is good. I, I guess I might spend too much time in the casinos and doing things I shouldn't where you know, a night or two is about all I need. And the banquet week is, you know, three days too long because you know, livers hate me by the end of it. But, uh, you know, Vegas Vegas is fun, but it, it it's really just, in my mind, a, a racing town. You know, it's why, why I've been here so many times. And uh, I do have friends that, you know, from the off-road racing industry that are in town. Just saw Brennan gone in the hallway, chatted with him, and... Uh, growing up, I'd stay at his house, and we'd come out here to the go-kart track and race around. Um, you know, so different memories like that, but again, all, all racing-based. Let's go to Alan Reed. Did you have one? Yes. Uh, Alan Reed, and then to uh, Marty. Go ahead. Uh, Alan Kavana, NASCAR.com. At the end of this weekend, how, how much uh, will you put into how your team performs in going in? in how, how will you look at this, your performance at the test? and what you do on Sunday and, and diagnose that for the rest of your season, given that we go to so many intermediate tracks? Yeah, I think how we run here will dictate uh, our testing schedule. Um, if we don't have the speed or, or feel like directionally we're, we're going down the right road, it would be useful to test on a bigger track soon. You know, a lot of people have been in Nashville, and, and Nashville is great to get out and, and run on, but it's, it's not a mile and a half, and it's tough to really – uh, take specifics from that racetrack to uh, other racetracks. You know, it's a concrete track, different shape, different size than, than a lot of places we run on. So uh, it, this weekend's important for sure. And uh, yesterday was very helpful and useful. I'm, I'm glad that NASCAR allowed us to come out for a few hours. Go to Reed, then we'll go to uh, Marty and Lewis. Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. You alluded to it earlier, and several people have said similar things, that there seems to be more adjustability in this competition package this year and that you may be able to take bigger swings at the car during a race. Does that put more pressure on you in, in terms of communication and being precise in terms of what the car is doing? Definitely. I mean, communication is, is always key. 
uh, you know, the one thing that we have found right now with the ride heights like they are and the options you can run for springs, and you can change, uh, the, you can make a change to a spring in the car and affect your ride heights and completely change the way the, the geometry works in the car. And as you look at it initially, you think, okay, this will free the car up. You send it on the racetrack, you come back, you're plowing tight. Like, wait a second, what's going on? And you've got to look three or four layers deeper to understand the way everything works together. And they're like, oh, I see. It changed ride heights, which changed this. And now, now I see why the car is tight. So it, there are more steps involved with making a decision now. So I, I feel like communication st still is key, but the thought process on the pit box is more important than it's ever been uh, because a simple change affects more, more things now. Go to Marty and then to Lewis. Go ahead, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Johnson, describe the difference in Dale Jr.'s confidence from where he was when it was real bad to where he is now when he's just riding on cloud nine all the time. Yeah, I feel that, you know, and, and we're all guilty of it when things aren't rolling well. Um, you, you go multiple races without winning or season, seasons, what, whatever, whatever it might be. You know, you, uh, I think a lot of people uh, look within and, and kind of shut down and get quiet. And I, I certainly feel like Junior is, is in that category and, and maybe more so than a lot of people. Um, just guessing that pressure from fans, pressure that he puts on himself, pressure of, you know, his father's success. A lot of those elements weigh on him heavy and heavier than what a lot of other drivers deal with. And getting to know him so well now being in the same shop, I, I, I could see that effect on him. And I've always tried to lighten things up and try to help keep him open and, and having fun. Uh, Steve Letarte is greatly responsible to keep, for keeping him open and having fun. And when stuff's not right, Steve does a nice job of, hey, this, you know, this sucked. <laughs> Let's move on and do something different. And that, that's worked very well for him. And it's kept his confidence high. And, you know, the last couple races certainly show where his confidence is in, in what comes with it. But I, I can say that throughout all of last year and, and even into the, you know, part of the season the year before when things really started turning around for him, that, uh, you know, success leads to confidence. And that, that machine, that circle started. And, and they were, they've been building ever since. And we've all seen it in the stats and performance. And then this year he's off to an awesome start. Go to Lewis. So Lewis Frank of Reuters and AutoWeek.com. A uh, little while ago we were asking Kyle about pressure to, to, you know, get that win and to lock into the chase early in the year. And his, his response was he didn't feel it was so difficult on uh, constant performers. But the pressure comes in at, at Chicago and Loudoun and Dover to get that win. And I was wondering, you know, how, how do you think this will change the approach uh, of drivers such as yourself uh, to, to, for that first segment of the chase? Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, the fact that points still count, you know, for the first cut to make the chase, you know, essentially you need to be 16th in, in points, uh, which is more generous than what we've seen in, in previous years. So I do agree with Kyle's mindset, and I think that winning late in the season is very important. And, and I guess you still can transfer all the way through by having, uh, you know, great point situation, which I'm in favor of. I think our, our series still needs to have that element of consistency and be rewarded for it. Uh, but winning becomes most important uh, from Chicago on. Other questions for Jimmy? All right, Jimmy, thanks for coming in. Cool. And a lot of luck this weekend at Las Vegas.